Hi everybody. Today's lesson is on biogeochemical cycles, which is a mouthful to say. Now, food chains and food webs, which we've been talking about, are all about how energy moves through an ecosystem. And energy doesn't get recycled. Like, energy always starts off in the sun and is, you know, absorbed by the plants through photosynthesis and passed along to the food chain until you get all the way to the top, the apex burner, which is, you know, that shark or that lion, that tiger or whatever. But then, when they die, that energy is gone. However, nutrients like carbon, nitrogen, and water, they get recycled over and over and over again throughout the ecosystem. And their path is what's known as the biogeochemical cycles. So the first cycle we're going to be talking about is the water cycle. This diagram right here shows you everything you need to know about the water cycle. And it's a lot of terms that you should already be familiar with, right? Uh, you have liquid water right here that gets evaporated and that's what and now it's in the atmosphere um you know it forms clouds and things like that as it cools down we have this process called condensation where it forms water droplets as those water droplets fall to the earth you know it falls in the form of precipitation which could be in the form of rain or it could be in the form of snow um again a lot of familiar terms on this diagram for you. The one term right in the middle here that you might be new to you is a process called transpiration. And transpiration is nothing more than evaporation of water through the surface of leaves. Uh, so it's just evaporation through plants. But the water cycle has literally been like, you know, part of the science curriculum since first grade. Uh, so I'm confident that you guys uh, are pretty comfortable with the water cycle already. The second cycle that I want to talk about is the carbon cycle. And a lot of the carbon cycle we've actually already talked about this year, right? Uh, so if we start off in the atmosphere, carbon exists in the atmosphere in the form of CO2. Now, that CO2 can get absorbed by plants through this process of photosynthesis, right? And now that carbon is turned into glucose. Well, a lot of times those plant leaves are eaten by animals right? because we want their glucose. We break down that glucose into ATP, but the carbon from the glucose is released as CO2 every time we exhale and it goes back into the atmosphere. Now, if the plants or animals die, now their carbon ends up in the soil. Over a long period of time, that carbon in the soil turns into fossil fuels like oil and coal. Eventually, we'll burn that oil and coal, and it ends up adding more CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, one problem that, that we had recently is that we were burning so many fossil fuels that it was just filling our atmosphere with more and more uh, CO2. And carbon dioxide is actually a greenhouse gas, so what it does is it traps in the sun's heat, right? And it's one of the causes of global warming with the greenhouse effect. There was one more nutrient cycle I want to talk about today, and that's the nitrogen cycle. Now, all living things, we need nitrogen to make things like nitrogen, I'm sorry, to make things like uh, DNA um, and proteins. And you would think that we wouldn't have a problem getting nitrogen because almost 80% of our atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas. The problem with nitrogen gas is that nothing can use nitrogen gas, right? It's completely inaccessible to us. The only organs on the planet that can take nitrogen out of the atmosphere and convert it into a form that's usable is bacteria, specifically these nitrogen-fixing bacteria that we see here and here. So this bacteria takes the nitrogen out of the atmosphere, turns it into a form that can be dissolved in the soil, that's ammonia, right? But what this bacteria essentially does is it takes this harmless nitrogen gas and converts it into ammonia, which is this toxic, foul-smelling substance. So now we need a second type of bacteria called nitrifying bacteria to convert this toxic ammonia into something called nitrites. The thing about nitrites is that it's also toxic. So he's like, thanks a lot, you stupid bacteria. All you do is you take one toxic substance and you turn it into a second toxic substance. So now we have another type of bacteria that can take the nitrites and turn it into nitrates. And nitrates are now safe. So once the nitrogen is in the form of nitrates, it can be taken up by plants 
right? So the plant roots absorb it from the soil. Animals will eat the plants, and now the nitrogen can be passed along the food chain, right? As the animal, or in this case the cow, dies, its body decomposes, and that nitrogen ends up back into the soil. Um, however, in order to complete the cycle, you need to somehow get the nitrogen back in to the atmosphere in the form of nitrogen gas, which is where we started off with. Again, there's only one organism on the planet that can, can, take, can take nitrogen out of the soil and put it back into the atmosphere, and that's denitrifying bacteria that we see right here. So, the nitrogen cycle is a very, very important uh, nutrient cycle. We couldn't survive without nitrogen, and it's completely controlled by different types of bacteria. All right, guys, that's it for today's lesson. Uh, have a nice day.